I was 14-year-old Rachel Parent. Throwing down the gauntlet to Kevin, the teen activist is passionate about genetically modified food and, as you just heard, takes issue with a lot of things Kevin has to say on the subject, including a show that we did some time ago. Rachel's an activist and the founder of Kids Right to Know. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me here today. I, I want to start with how you came to be passionate about this. Uh, what was it about GMO that actually drew you in the first place? Well, originally I had to do a speech for my school and I really wasn't sure what to do it on. So I was re researching these different topics and I realized that GMOs actually affected everything. So I decided to go with GMOs and researched it more and more and then eventually I just got so into it protesting and got so into it I started doing speeches for other people. Who are the other people you're doing speeches for? I actually go to schools and um, I also do speeches at protests and different um, conferences as well. Are your parents involved? Is it something that they supported or was this something that you did all on your own? I did it but they support me completely. Yeah. You, you know what a lobbyist is, right? Yes. Somebody, okay. Do you think you're a lobbyist for the movement that's against genetically modified foods? Would you call yourself that? No, I, I don't think so. And I, I think that I'm just a part of that movement. And I feel like I'm like supporting the youth, really. And why, when you say kids' right to know, why, is it, why do you feel it's important? I mean, this is obviously an issue that's a political hot button, uh, right? It's a fight in places like Europe, keeping the foods out of places, labeling them in America. It's all over the place. Why do kids in particular, in your view, need to have an awareness of this? For sure. Um, I believe it's our future, after all. I mean, if you're going to do something to our food, we should definitely know about it. And we're the ones who might have to live with these consequences. So why not be informed about it? Do you make the assumption right out of the gate that all uh, kids your age believe that this is a bad thing to experiment with foods to make them better or worse? Is this something that you think everybody thinks is bad? Not necessarily, but I believe that everyone has the right to know what's in their food. And that's exactly why my whole campaign's about. And that's why I just want GMO labeling, and that way people can make informed decisions about what they want to eat. Do you worry at all about being used? Uh, Kevin sort of alluded to this. There are huge lobby groups on either side of this. Uh, the, the companies that make the GM, GMO foods and grains and the rest of it definitely have powerful lobby efforts, but so do the environmentalists and others. Do you worry about being used at all in this fight? No, because my own cause is different, I believe, because we're just the youth, and we're a complete part of it. But we're separate in a way because we're fighting not only for our food, but for our future and for our nature and our ecosystem. So I believe that we're completely different in a way, but we add to the group. Okay, let's drill into the issue. Um, and uh, let's say you weren't as lucky as you are. You were born in an Asian country. You were 14 years old. Your only food was rice that had no vitamin A in it. You're going blind and then you died. 550,000 people your age die that way every year. And a company like Monsanto could come along and offer you a genetically modified rice that includes vitamin A that could save your eyesight and your life. How do you feel about that, Rachel? Actually, funny you mention this. Golden rice was scrapped because it didn't work. And in order for the average 11-year-old boy to get enough vitamin A from rice, he'd have to eat 11, no, 27 bowls of rice per day. Um, and another thing is, the reason there's blindness isn't because there's a lack of vitamin A in the rice. It's because their diets are simply rice. Well, that's the problem. You're saying even if he has to eat 30 bowls of rice, there's no vitamin A in what he's eating now. It's not scrapped. It's still being tested. And the bottom line is there'll be other ways to modify food to save people like that. Should we not be trying these things to help those that are dying? Or are you against that too? Should we be messing with Mother Nature? Well, what do you say to a child your age that's going to die? What do you say? I mean, in all reality, because golden rice didn't work, how can we fight for that? And so you don't want to see any attempts to stop food from being destroyed by insects. I mean, th what I'm trying to focus you on is, is there no merits to this at all from your point of view? My point of view is just that it should be, first of all, tested a lot more. I mean, it's only tested by the very companies that stand to gain by their approval. So. I really think that it, we should have independent studies and then mandatory GMO labeling, that's my thing. That way we can, as consumers, have informed decisions. Well, there's two debates going on here. One, you want to see labeling, that's one thing. But are you against modifying food at all? Which one? Um, I actually, I know this sounds radical, but yes, I am against 
genetically modifying our food. I, Rachel, I have a problem with that. That may be causing or basically giving a death sentence to millions of people around the world but that are not as fortunate as you are. You know that uh, GMOs actually don't have higher yields either. But look, the point is to stop experimentation in a science like this that has so much promise could be a huge mistake and effectively be a death sentence for those that need higher yields if they can get and them, plants that are not susceptible to insects and indeed have more vitamins that they need to stay alive with. And I'm completely, you know what, actually I'm totally fine and that's completely somebody's decision whether they want to eat GMOs or not. I'm totally okay with that. So they can keep growing it. That's totally fine. As long as they continue to test and also give us the choice because it's our right to know. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to let yeah, Kevin and O'Leary a little bit more. Uh, yep. Stay with us after the break. Kevin and Rachel will face off on the issue of genetically modified food. About 90% of all corn, cotton, and soy planted in the U.S. has been genetically modified. The use of these types of seeds around the world is widespread and growing. Proponents say they help farmers plant more with less and ultimately help increase yield to feed the world. Critics say people need more information about food that's been altered for health and safety reasons. Rachel Parent is a teen activist and founder of Kids Right to Know. Great to have you here. Thank you. I, I want to talk about sort of this fine distinction, and Kevin was raising this before, but is it an all or nothing question? Because we, throughout history, whether it's, you know, the breeding of animals or, you know, in introducing things like hothouse tomatoes, we do change the way things are grown, and we even change their makeup, their color, their, co you know, the content of them. We just do it more slowly outside of a lab. Is there some room to improve things scientifically if we safety test them if we actually go through the same kind of FDA studies you have to do with a drug? Well, um, I think a lot of people also confuse hybridization with GMOs. Yep. And just to clarify, GMOs, it's a genetically modified organism, and it's where they take the DNA from a species such as a, it can be like bacteria, virus, um, animal, or even from a plant, and they insert it into the DNA of another species to introduce a new trait. For instance, a common trait is pesticide producing. So they'll make the crops pesticide producing, but they haven't adequately tested. And Monsanto's longest study is 90 days. That really doesn't determine how long term it's going to affect our health, the environment, and even our entire ecosystem. Yeah. You know, saying Monsanto's testing in 90 days is a little uh, mislabeling it because many other organizations, including it sounds like some ones you're involved in, do much more testing. So a product comes to market, many people test it, including the government. So Monsanto knows that about food. Actually, um, can I just, in Health Canada nor the FDA do any independent studies, and they rely only on the very studies provided by the companies that stand to gain by their approval, like Monsanto. There's other companies as well, right? Yes, but they... They all do their own independent. Are there organizations on the other side of this debate that do, is there any, what, is, what would the testing look like? In other words, what kind um, of testing would be reliable to say okay. this is okay for the environment or the ecosystem? Definitely we need a long-term study to determine if it's safe for not only our ecosystem but our health as well. Yeah. Um, but, but Rachel, we're in a long-term study. You're eating genetically modified food whether you like it, it or we're not. We're the lab rats. Exactly. And, and, and we have been for decades, and I think the, 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 what I'm trying to get at about your point of view, and look, everybody should, has the right to have one, but to say that there's no merit to having science try and make yields better or foods better or help people's problems on a dietary basis sounds a little extreme. And I'm wondering as time passes, because I have a case study in my own home. I had a daughter your age, who, at the same time she was vehemently opposed to this, she decided to make a documentary film and she went through the process of researching it. I'm going to show you a clip of it and she was just like you. She I, doesn't feel that way today you anymore. You know, actually Kevin, I have seen this video and I don't necessarily agree with all the points that are made. Um, and I do have some information that I can share but with she, you after about it. She went at it from both sides. She didn't make a claim at the beginning that she had a point of view. She said, I'm going to examine both sides. And I wish for you the same thing because to stay on a point and you that... Know, actually, I have examined both sides, but I choose to follow and this side. And you would side. prefer to see no more work Not in necessarily GMOs. this, but I do believe if they're going to work, not only that they have to test it, but at least give us the right to know what's in our food. Okay, different issue around labeling. I think everybody gets that, and I think the trend in society now is more transparency, and you're going to get labeled. Fine, okay. But I'm trying to explore whether you have any flexibility in your thinking about the merits of science and food 
it doesn't sound like you do, and I find that um, not good, actually. Actually, you know what? If they want to experiment, okay, but that brings me back to the labeling. At least give us the choice. The truth is, though, as we know, virtually every product in the grocery store would then be labeled GMO. One danger that you'd face is we would just become immune to that label. We would accept that it's everywhere. As Kevin says, we've been exposed to it for decades, and we'd shrug and say, well, it may be killing the monarch butterflies, but you know, I've been eating it for 10 years, so I'm not going to stop now. Are you worried about but that aspect of this? Not necessarily, because at least then they have the choice if they want to eat it. But the people like me will find the well, odd... Well, we don't really. I mean, in, we, I don't have a choice to avoid GMO corn if I live in America, right? Because it is all genetically modified. It's pretty much all... So if I'm going to eat corn or any corn-based products or any corn flour or anything that's derived from it, I'm eating this stuff. So that's a pretty tough choice to make. I mean, there are the odd ones that aren't, and that's why we do want labeling. That way we do know which ones are. You know, you're very articulate. That's a positive. What I'm concerned about and what I'm exploring with you is whether you've become a shill for a group that wants to use you because, of your, because you're young, you're articulate, you're getting lots of media, and I'm happy for you on that. But I'm trying to figure out whether you really deep down believe this, that you should Definitely. stop. You should stop all scientific approach to looking at food, even if it has long-term benefits down the road for people that really are not as lucky as we are in North America, that don't have access to all the protein we do. That, 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 can't, be, that, that can't be your position. I don't believe it. It's not necessarily that. And this brings me, again, back to the labeling. Because, I mean, at least test it properly, adequately. That way we know as the consumer if it's safe. And you know what? Okay, whoever wants to eat it or whoever wants to experiment with it, go ahead. But okay, the well, Rachel, I give you the labeling. Let's say we mandate everything's labeled. Got that. Would you allow companies like Monsanto and many others to try and modify foods to the benefit of all human Are you beings everywhere? I guess yes or no? Question. I'm not anti science, but I'm for responsible science and ethical progress. Science that's proven safe by not the right. very same companies that stand to gain by their approval. And I'd like to say we have no evidence, uh, and we may want to withdraw the accusation that you're a shill. Uh, what you are is clearly a passionate 14 year old and we need well, more I, of those you in know, the world. I, I, I've always thought that as people age, because you can have a vehement position at one time in your life, but when you start to see the evidence on the other side of it over time, you may change your minds. And for, from my point of view about you, I hope that happens. <laughs> Is that likely to happen, Rachel? No. <laughs> All right. We've got to leave it there, but we do appreciate you being here Thank with you. us. Thank you. Rachel Parent.